Hello everyone, this is Gail, and if you watched my uh, video a couple weeks ago on the Deep Shine RV res resin, um, I showed you some things from my boxes of stuff that I have made in the past, and um, you know, just when I finished them, I put them in boxes. And one of the things I showed you was this color wheel necklace. And I've had quite a few people ask about this necklace. So I think I'm going to do one with you today. <coughs> Excuse me, I was getting a frog in my throat. I think I'll go ahead and do one for you today. And it won't be the same as this because I'm going to use different colors. But before we get started, I want to show you this book and this is an old book uh, the copyright on this is looks like 2001 2002 and it's called color index and it's by a man by the name of Jim Krause K-R-A-U-S-E and when I went to look for this to put it in my influencer shop, in case you wanted this, I didn't find this one in particular, but they've got several revisions that are out. But So if you want to look at for Color Index, and then Jim Krause is the author, it's really worthwhile, because I've had people ask me how I choose colors. And let me show you what's inside. Here is like what they call a rich color palette. It shows the same colors on white as there is on black. It's the exact same colors. See how you can see those. This is just this palette that was chosen. But then you've got all of these different, um, like if you use these two colors, you can use them in designs like that. Or these two colors, they would look like that. And you can go through here and find different color palettes. You can find different colors. Just like if you're looking for something that's got a, say, a bright red. I believe this looks like a red. It's got a little bit of blue in it. But anyway, uh, this looks like it's got a red. And there's red with green, and it shows you what it looks like. Let me zoom in just a little bit, just so you can see it a little better. What it looks like in a pattern, there's blue and orange, but this is, a, this is not the blue blue. This is this color blue and orange. And then you have the yellowish color and a pink. So this has been a great help for me and just figuring out what colors go together. Um, you know, you've got your bright colors, you've got some softer colors, they have the pastels, they have really pastel, then it goes into something a little bit better. But it's, it's just a good reference to have. And I, I love this book. You know, it's just he says there's a 1,100 color combinations, and I believe in his revised book, it's even more. But let's, the first thing I need to talk to you about is just the basics of color. And I am not an expert on color. This is just what I have learned through the years. But you have three uh, primary colors. You have red, yellow, and blue. And see, these are a little bit more bold in the title, in the name of them here. And then you have secondary colors, which is a combination of the two primary. So the secondary for blue and yellow is green. The secondary for blue and red is violet. And the secondary for red and yellow is orange. So those are your secondary colors. Then you have, you go into your other uh, colors. So when you're looking at something, you, you hear people talk about how they don't want to mix 
together two colors because they're afraid it's going to turn into mud. When that happens is like if you mix blue with orange, they're opposite each other on the color wheel. If you mix those two together, you're going to get this yucky mud color. So you don't want to mix colors that are opposite each other, or they turn to a brownish, grayish mud color. Even though these colors look good together, because what's opposite of red but green? What do you have at Christmas? Red and green. Everything's red and green. They look together fine as long as you don't mix the colors together. Same thing with all of your others. Yellow and purple. How many beautiful flowers have you seen that were made up of either yellow with a purple center or purple with a yellow center? Nature is fantastic when it comes to getting colors. And, uh, but yet, you don't want to mix them together. If you mix the two together, try to blend them together. Like if you did a, a Skinner blend with the yellow and the purple, you would end up with mud in the middle where it blended. So that's something you don't want to do. And I was always stuck with red, blue, and yellow as a red, red, a blue, blue, and a yellow, yellow. But if you look at this necklace, I got away from that. And whoever, and I can't even remember who it was that we did the color class with. But instead of using, all right, I did use a blue, and I don't remember what blue this is, but I did use a blue. But for the red, I used copper. Copper is a red color. It's not red red, but it's it's a red color. And I use gold for my yellow. Because I like at this particular time in my life and even now, I preferred the metallic uh, colors to the uh, regular colors. And this may, I'm trying to see, I don't it has a little bit of a sheen, but it could be because I wore this for a while before it broke, and then I've restrung it, but I haven't really finished it yet. So, what I thought I would do is pick three colors. I'm going to pick a blue, I'm going to pick a yellow, and I'm going to pick a red. But they're going to be entirely different from this. But if you want to make one like this, then use, it's sort. I guess that's like a cobalt blue. I'm not sure what that blue is, but it's a nice blue blue. And then use copper for your red and yellow for your yellow. I mean gold for your yellow. But I decided that I would go with some pearl colors. So I'm going to use peacock pearl for my blue. I'm going to use 18 karat gold for my yellow. And I'm going to use magenta pearl for my red. Now you see this is not a blue blue. Well, that is kind of blue, but it's kind of a peacocky blue. If you know. <laughs> is that a new word? The gold is a yellow. This is not exactly a red, but that's what I'm going to use for a red. And I'm going to uh, condition all of these, and we're going to cut some colors. Uh, all you need is a um, is a cutter. I prefer either a round or a square cutter. So I am going to pick this square cutter. And I'm going to roll out enough of this clay to cut out 16 of these squares with each color. So after I've done that, I will come back and we will get started on our color wheel necklace or bracelet. It could be whatever you prefer. Be right back. Okay, I've got all of my clay rolled out and cut into 16 pieces. And I used a half of a package of each color, cut my 16 pieces, and still had this much left over. So it doesn't take you know, a whole lot of clay, but it, I would go ahead and still roll out a half a package, and that way you'll at least have a big enough surface to cut out the 16 slices. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take four 
of each one and just kind of roll it into a ball or just some it doesn't matter what shape because it's whatever shape you're going to want at the end but that's going to be my blue bead and I'll take four yellow ones looks like the magenta pearl is going to make a mess it's left marks all over my tile so we're going to have to be careful with that one and I'll take these four this is going to be my red. Now you can use any red, any yellow, any blue that you like. This is just what I chose for this one because I've never used these colors and I was curious to see how it turned out. Now I am going to try to clean up this surface a little bit. And you know as long as you're pure colors you can use your clay to clean. It'll pick itself up. If you know what I mean. See how it's picking a lot of this clay up. Getting a lot of it off of the surface so that I don't have to worry about it contaminating the other colors. Okay. So we've got the red, the yellow, and the blue. And I've taken four of each one and made a pure color. So the way I've got this lined up, I'm going to take three blues and one yellow. Then I'm going to take two blues and two yellows and then one blue and three yellows. Now does that make any sense? If you look at this one, there's three blues, one yellow, two blues, two yellows, and one blue, three yellows. And this is how you do your colors. Um, and we'll combine all these in a minute. So then I'm going to take, um, I've got the three yellows here, so I'm going to take two yellows because this is going to go in the middle and I'm going to put two of the reds and then one yellow and three of the reds. You'll always have four squares. Each one is going to take four. So we've still got all these left over but we've still got to go between the red and the blue. So here we are with three reds I mean, three blues and one yellow. Then this blue will be in here. Then I'll take three blues and one red. And I'm just going to put it over here just for, I'll put it the red on top. And then I'm going to take two blues and two reds. and then three reds and a blue. And somewhere I, oh, I, in here I forgot to do the one, one red and three yellows. There. So those are going to be your color mixes and you want to keep them in this order and then you're going to just start mixing colors. And it's just as easy with clay this soft to do it by hand. But if you want, you can put your blue there as the first thing. And they're all going to be the same size because they were all cut with the same cutter. It's just the colors are going to be a little bit blended. So this is going to be the blue mixed with one yellow. And you can already see a change in the color. I'll, pro I'll blend these a little bit better in a little bit, but see the difference in the color already? This one's got more blue in it. 
I mean more yellow. Or it's got yellow in it. So this one, let me make sure it's just all blended together. And I'll just roll it into a little ball. And I'm going to put that next to the blue. Now this one is the two blues and two yellows. Same thing. Mix them together. This one ought to be a little bit greener. And feel free to uh, fast forward through this if you like. I'm just doing the same thing with all the colors, but I may have a tip or something in between. I don't know until I start working whether I need to tell you anything or not. So I'm going to leave the camera going the way it is. But if you don't want to watch me blend all this clay, by all means, fast forward. This is still a little marbly. Sometimes you can't tell, in blending it like this, you can't tell if it's blended or not until you try to roll it smooth. And that's when you can see the changes. I don't know what that is that just got on my blue clay. Probably something that was on my hands. See, that's a little bit greener. I didn't know what these colors would look like. I'm really enjoying these colors. This should be more closer to a, lime, a limeier green. I don't know. We'll see. This is the one with the three yellows and the one blue. And you don't have to make a necklace out of this. You could take, um, you know, take these and poke a hole in them and put them on a key ring and then keep them for color reference. Just mark the name of the color and the um, recipe that you used to come up with that color. Like on this one, I could put um, 3Y1B for 3 yellow, 1 blue. And then if you ever wanted that color, you could always look at your color swatches and say, Oh, that's the color I want. How did I make that? And you would have the recipe. And that's probably what I will do because I don't need a necklace that's a color wheel. I don't wear anything that these would go with very well. See, this came out a little bit limeier, like a more of a lime green. Now here we're switching to the red. So this is going to be this and then the, the yellow is going to go there. So there's the beginning of our color wheel. Now we're going to the three yellows and one red. Now we'll start going more towards the oranges. But this, I just, you never know. And, and you, each time you do a recipe, use a different red, a different yellow, and a different blue. Or you could just change one of them. Maybe change the blue from a peacock blue pearl to maybe... Um, a cobalt blue or change the gold from 18 karat gold to just regular gold or change the magenta pearl from that to a red like cadmium red or you know something like that pomegranate that would be a pretty red there's so many things you can do I just wanted to see I wanted to use all pearls this time or all metallics the gold is a metallic but it's kind of the same thing It all works the same. Pearls and metallics kind of work the same 
regardless. So this is interesting. This color. So I'll put that one there. And this is the two reds and two yellows. I'm just going to move these out of the way so I can have space. I think I only need space for one more, and that's this. No, I need two more. But I just think this is really a lot of fun. And it's something you can do without having a spe specific project in mind. Like I said, I'm going to roll these out and probably cut them either into squares or circles and use it as a palette so that next time when I need these colors, like if I need this green and I see it, I can look at it and say, oh, that was one yellow and three peacocks. Pearls. So... My goal is to have lots and lots of these mixed up. And that way when you when I need something and I'm, you know, I can go to different recipes. I can go to the one like I did with this using now this is Cato copper, which is redder. The Primo copper is not real red. But that's the uh, Cato and that's a, all this is Cato cuz that's all I used when I made this. So those are Kato colors. I can use that. And now these are going to be Primo colors. And these are mixed, but you see, might see little swirls in it, but that's because they are um, pearl colors. It's the mica going in different directions. Now these, I don't see a lot of difference in colors like I did with, the, with this. I don't see quite as big a change with the yellow, with the 18 karat gold and this magenta pearl. Except I'm getting pink all over my hands. So be careful with your magenta pearl. It obviously is highly pigmented and it likes to stick to your fingers. But I'm going to keep it since the next two colors I'm making are going to be mostly magenta pearl. And I guess I'll start... I'm pressing these a little bit flatter so I can tell the difference in these and the ones I started with. But I think I'll just start going around in a circle. And now this is the magenta pearl. So this one is going to be the three magenta pearls and one blue. This is one of those things you can do while you're sitting watching TV. Just cut you a bunch of squares of different colors of reds, blues, and yellows. And then go sit in front of the TV and put them together. See what you've got. The blue is changing this more than the yellow did. It's turning a little purple. It's rather, rather pretty. But this is going to give you the secondary, and I can't remember, it's, it's a funny like Tia Terry or something like that, colors. You could take it down, you could make more squares and mix more colors. You could divide this down instead of three and one, you could do three and a half and a half or something like that. But look at this purple, isn't that pretty? I'm turning this around because 
this blue needs to be where it is. But look how purple that got just with one square of the blue. Actually, I think I'll just put a red, put an R, and a B. And a Y so that I don't get them mixed up. After this, there's only one more to go. You won't have to watch me do this anymore. But I'm loving watching these colors come to life. This is a deeper purple. because it's got more blue in it. These are all such pretty colors. I'm so glad I chose these three colors. And then this is the last one. This is the three blues and one magenta pearl. And we'll just see where this goes. Should be closer to the blue, but still on the purple side. Now you could take this a step further if you wanted to really do a super duper color sample. You could take these colors and then you could mix white with them all and put the white in the center and then you could mix black with them all and put those on the outside. And then you would have your tones and your shades. Your shade would be the ones with the black added. And then the tones would be the ones with the white added. All of this is things that I've learned through the years. Uh, I attended Lindley Hunani's color class. who is She is like the grand poopa of color. She knows so much about color theory, much more than I even understood. And then Maggie Maggio, she's another one that understands color just great. The two of them wrote a book together, and I don't think it's in publication anymore, but you can still pick up copies here and there. And I should have it up here on my work service. There it is. Polymer Clay Color Inspirations. Lindley Hunani and Maggie Maggio. And it's a fun book because you not only have projects and things in there, but it's like a little test. You'll say, okay, take this kind of color and this kind of color and mix it together and do this. But there are my colors. Are they not gorgeous? Let me come in a little bit because you've got to see these colors. Look at that. Those are so pretty. And here's my red, and here's my blue, and there's my yellow. I just think those are so nice. So, like I said, I don't think I'm going to make a necklace. You can. You can make cut them into shapes and put it, make beads out of them and string them into a necklace. You could do the same thing with a bracelet if you'd like to have a big color bracelet wheel bracelet. You could roll all of these into round beads. Just keep them in the right order and those would be the beads for your bracelet. But like I said, I think I am going to cut mine and make them into um, a color wheel, a color sample. So I'm going to get my larger square cutter and I'm not sure, let me do the blue first. I'm not sure how far this has to roll out. I don't want to get my colors mixed up. But 
but I want to make this big enough to cut with this large square. I've got some clay stuck on this cutter from the last time I used it. It's on the plunger too. That's all right. I'll just use the other side. And this is well. This will be the the back because it's kind of messed up. So let me go over here. And this is the blue. So let me see if I can find. Oh, I've moved them to the other side of the room. I think I'm going to go get my alphabet stamps and use those. So let me go get those and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm going to use these. And I'm going to put I don't I hope I'll remember what these stand for. Was this a P? Yes, it's a P. Yes, it's a P. In fact, I'll put them together. Here's Peacock Pearl. So I'm hoping I will remember. I'll have to write down what my codes are. But this is Peacock Pearl. And then this one is Peacock. I have to roll it out first. And let me find my small roller so I don't have to finagle with my big one. Just trying to make it big enough for my square. And cut this one out. And roll the rest into a little ball little bead. You never know when you might need these in a in something. And this is Peacock Pearl. One Peacock Pearl and see I don't have numbers on these. I'm going to put I don't think I have but two. I think this is two sets. But I think that D looks just like a P. So I'm going to put three P's. Except it won't go upside down. Okay, that's not going to work. So I'm going to put two and one, and then one magenta pearl. Well, there's a P. And I'm only putting the Magenta pearl on, actually I should have just put it on this one. I need to put these on something that I'm going to bake it on. So this is peacock pearl. Three peacock pearls and one magenta pearl.
Then I've got There we have it. I'm going to probably cut a hole in these. Um, let me use my tiny little hole puncher, my Kemper tool, and I'll just cut this hole here. could do this after it's baked. These are going to have to go on the bottom because there's not much room. Just put a hole wherever you can fit one. As long as you can read your recipe it doesn't really matter where the hole is. And what I'll probably do is do a, um, I have key tags, if you know what key tags are, look like. The little round disc that you hook to your keys that you can write things on. And I'll probably do a key tag with the legend showing that the peas is peacock pearl. This one's going to be a hard place to find a hole try to fit it in there but that's it there's my color wheel and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna keep these for uh, I'll probably have a little peg up here and I'm gonna start putting um, my recipes up there so whenever I'm looking for a color I went hey this is the color green I want that is 18, I'll have a le legend on the ring and it, two 18 karat golds and two uh, peacock pearls. So there you go. How's that for a simple and yet very helpful thing? You can make your own tools uh, like this. Um, this is a great tool to have. If you would rather make it into a necklace like this, then just form your, your beads. <coughs> Um, if you are going to make a necklace, I would suggest that you combine some of these colors, you know, like combine these two, these two, these two, so that you'll have a few more um, beads. This one is more than 16 beads. This one is, let me start here at the yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This is 24 beads. So if you mix some of your other colors, see between each color here, there's the yellow and here's the blue. This is the equal colors of these two, and then these are three graduated colors in between. See if I did them on all of them. Here's the red, and here's the blue. Yeah, there's three in between. So instead of having two colors in between, they had what you do is you would take your... This is going to get complicated, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to lose you. So here's my yellow, 
and here's my blue. I would take two yellows and two blues and that makes this color. And then you would take, you know, add whatever you need to these beads. And it, it gets really complicated. I'd rather you stick with this if you can. Um, if you want to make it into a bracelet, you can see you've got plenty to... If you make it into a necklace with this size bead, that would be fine. You could add texture to it uh, before you bake it and then put perfect pearls on it if you want. Put a pretty... Before you bake it, put a pretty pearl on top of it to give it some extra shine. Or maybe you like it just the way it is. Uh, you could make charms. You could take these and just make, you know, little charms to go on a, a, a bangle bracelet. Not a bangle bracelet, a charm bracelet. There's so many things you could do, but I just wanted to show you the principle between the colors. And like I said, this book is on my... Um, I don't know if I found one to put on my influencer page or not. I couldn't find this one, but I think I found one that was a later edition. I'm just not sure. But just look at all the different color schemes. And if you're really into mixing colors, this has the color recipes here. Like for, uh, let me find a color that you can see other than that one. Say... They like this blue. Now this is, what do they use for their colors? They use, um, cayenne, magenta, yellow, and black. So that's what this would be. This would be, right here is your formula for it. 70 parts of cayenne, 50 parts of magenta, 30 parts of yellow, and 40 parts of black would give you that dark, dark blue. And that's how they do the, you know, the recipes in here. But I've never mixed the recipes. I just found the colors that I wanted to use and looked in here to see what colors go with them. Like if I was looking for something to go with this like a hunter green, I would say, okay, there's this bluish gray, yellow, and red. They all go together. You know, or here's a red and a yellow and sort of a purple. I know those go together. So it helps, you know, just in figuring out what colors you want to use. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you make some of your own. And be creative in what you use as a red, a yellow, and a blue. So come back again next Monday for another Polymer Clay video and join me on Fridays for my Friday Frolics. See you then. Bye-bye.